Thanks, everybody. Thanks for hanging in there. We're almost there. My name is Pete Bannon. I, I run the uh, custom silicon and low voltage teams at Tesla. And my name is uh, Ganesh Venkat. I run the Dojo program. Thank you. I'm frequently asked, why is a car company building a supercomputer for training? And this question fundamentally misunderstands uh, the nature of Tesla. At its heart, Tesla is a hardcore technology company. All across the company, people are working hard in science and engineering to advance the fundamental understanding and, and methods that we have available to build cars, energy solutions, robots, and anything else that we can, we, we can do to improve the human condition around the world. It's a super exciting thing to be a part of, and it's a privilege to run a very small piece of it in the semiconductor group. Um, tonight, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Dojo and give you an update on what we've been able to do over the last year. Um, but before we do that, I wanted to give a little bit of background on the initial design uh, that we started a few years ago. When we got started, the goal was to provide a substantial improvement to the training latency for our autopilot team. Some of the largest neural networks they train today run for over a month, which inhibits their ability to rapidly explore alternatives and evaluate them. So, you know, a 30x speed up would be really nice if we could provide it at a cost competitive and energy competitive way. Um, to do that, we wanted to uh, build a chip with a lot of arithmetic, arithmetic units that we could utilize at a very high efficiency. And we spent a lot of time studying whether we could do that using DRAM, various packaging ideas, um, all of which failed. And in the end, even though it felt like an unnatural act, we decided to reject DRAM as the primary storage medium for this system and instead focus on SRAM embedded in the chip. SRAM provides, unfortunately, a modest amount of capacity, but extremely high bandwidth and very low latency. And that enables us to achieve high utilization with the arithmetic units. Those choices, uh, that particular choice led to a whole bunch of other choices. For example, if you want to have virtual memory, you need page tables. They take up a lot of space. We didn't have space, so no virtual memory. Uh, we also don't have interrupts. The accelerator is a bare bones, raw piece of hardware that's presented to a compiler, and the compiler is responsible for scheduling everything that happens in a deterministic way. So there's no need or even desire for interrupts in the system. We also chose to pursue uh, model parallelism as a training methodology, which is not the typical situation. Most, uh, most machines today use data parallelism, which consumes additional uh, memory capacity, which we obviously don't have. So all of those choices led us to build a machine that is pretty radically different uh, from what's available today. Um, we also had a whole bunch of other goals. One, one of the most important ones was no limits. So we wanted to build a compute fabric that would scale un in an unbounded way for the most part. I mean, obviously, there's physical limits now and yeah. then. Um, but you know, pretty much if your model was too big for the computer, you're, you just had to go buy a bigger computer. Uh, that's what we were looking for. Today, the way machines are packaged, there's a pretty fixed ratio of, for example, GPUs, CPUs, and, and DRAM capacity and network capacity. And we really wanted to disaggregate all that so that as models evolved, we could vary the ratios of, of those various elements and, and make the system more flexible to meet the needs of the autopilot team. Yeah, and, and it's so true, Pete, like no limits philosophy was our guiding star all the way. All of our choices were centered around that. And, and to the point that we didn't want traditional data center infrastructure to limit our capacity to execute these uh, programs at speed. So that's why we, that's why we, sorry about that. That's why we integrated vertically our data center, the entire data center by doing a vertical integration of the data center. We could extract new levels of efficiency. We could optimize power delivery, cooling, and as well as system management across the whole data center stack rather than doing box by box and integrating that, those boxes into data centers. And to do this, we also wanted to integrate early 
to figure out limits of scale uh, for our software workloads. So we integrated Dojo environment into our autopilot software very early, and we learned a lot of lessons. And today, uh, Bill Chang uh, will go over our hardware update, as well as some of the challenges uh, that we faced along the way. And uh, Rajiv Kurian will uh, give you a glimpse of our compiler technology, as well as uh, go over some of our cool results. Great. Thank you.